Welcome back to Little Mythic Classic. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you stick around and consider subscribing, especially if you're into these old Jags, like this 1991 Jaguar XJS V12 convertible. And in the previous video, you know, I replaced the brake hoses because one in the back failed and I replaced all of them, which means I need to bleed the brakes. Normally, that is pretty simple. However, this is still simple, but it's just a little different of doing it because I have the Tevis ABS brake system and the procedure is just a little different. So I thought I'd make a video for you guys and show how to do it, at least my way of doing it, which has worked very, very well before. Bleeding brakes is not difficult on normal vehicles. It's not difficult on these either. It's just a little bit different. So if you have a Tevis ABS system, first of all, this is what it looks like. So if you have this reservoir and you have an accumulator over there, that's what the system looks like. And if you have a vacuum unit here, you could have the earlier system or the later system. And then this is not the correct bleeding procedure for you. Some really important things, don't have the reservoir run dry. Make sure it doesn't run dry. On a regular car, you don't want that because of course you need to re-bleed again. Here, it's especially important because you don't want to have to bleed the low pressure side, which is, you know, the feed for the pump, the accumulator, all of that. You do not want to do that. I may go through in a future video on how to do it. It's not something you want to do unless you really, really have to. It's quite a pain. So make sure that this is full of nice, clean brake fluid. It's dirty in here. Remove the fluid, put in new clean fluid. I flushed the system a couple years ago, so the fluid was still pretty nice and clean but I filled it up with some new fluid because I lost fluid when replacing all the brake hoses. So it's a little bit above maximum. It's good. Should not be an issue. Bleeding the front is completely conventional. It's good to do it with a helper because you will need a helper for the rear. So it's just a normal thing. You know, push your brake pedal down, have your helper do that. You open the bleed nipple and, you know, fluid and air and bubbles come out. You close it, brake pedal comes up. And you continue until it is perfectly um, clear and nice brake fluid and of course no air. You always start with the side furthest away from the master cylinder. You start with the rear. So here it is the right rear, left rear, front right, uh, front left. And if it's a right hand drive vehicle, of course you start on the other side, but still starting with the rear. So that is really the basics. However, bleeding the rears is a little bit different. You need to use the pump. And the pump is actuated by the ignition. So before you start anything, you can actually build some pressure in the system. And the pump is running right now. It's hard to hear with that buzzer. Let's see if I can... There you go. Buzzer is running, or the pump is running, I mean. You have the anti-lock and the brake warning light. They will go off when the pump has built pressure. So we're gonna wait for that to happen. Uh, usually doesn't take that long, maybe 30, 40 seconds, something like that. You can hear it's starting to change the note. So it's almost ready. And the lights go off. And then you wait for the pump to stop as well. There you go. Now there is some pressure in the system. You can turn off the ignition. Prepare anything you need under the car. Make sure that you can open the bleed nipples and go and get your assistant. Just to clarify the bleeding procedure because it's a little odd. So what you need to do is your assistant turns on the ignition, waits for everything, lights to go off. You know, you're not running the engine, just ignition in the on position. Wait for that pump to stop running. You open the bleed nipple in the back that you want to bleed, open it up. Your assistant pushes the brake pedal down for about 15 seconds, not all the way down, partially is okay. Fluid will start to be pumped out back by the pump and you'll see air bubbles and all that come out. After those 15 seconds, you close that nipple, your assistant turns off the ignition and then they release the brake pedal. You wait about one to two minutes for the pump to cool down so it doesn't get hot. And then you continue until you have no air in the system and you move on to the next caliper. And when the, once that's all done, you can wait a little bit for the pump to cool down again. You're not gonna use the pump for the front brakes, but I think it's a good idea. Then you turn off the ignition and you bleed the front brakes regularly. 
add my lovely assistant wife here. She has the ignition on and I'm going to climb underneath and then I'll give her instructions on when to turn it off and all of that. I'm under here at the rear brakes. Trying to get a light for you guys. I got a hose on here going into plastic bottle. So I'm going to open this lead nipple now. All right, uh, trick now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, no fluid so far. Staying off tending on. Och släpp på spedalen. And now we wait a minute and do it all over again until nothing comes out, you know, except fluid. And as you can see, we got fluid coming out nicely now. I am going to close up the bleeder. Okay, you can turn the ignition off. And let go of the brake pedal. Now I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the other side. We've done the rears and there wasn't that much air in the system. Usually after a while you hear the pump run a bit. So maybe after five or six seconds the pump will start running. Usually that pushes out the last air. And I only have some bubbles really on the right left. Checking. Still have a lot of fluid left in the reservoir. So now we can move over to the front which are a lot easier. Up front is really simple and the reason I'm doing the front as well because I replaced the brake hoses here also. So I will ask my assistant to push down on the brake pedal and then I will open up this nipple and fluid and air will come out here just like regular brakes. Click that bottom sound. And you got a little bit coming out there. I'll close it. You can slip up down. And trick on air. Starting to see some air. A few minutes later of that, got some brake fluid coming out now. There was a lot of air in there. So uh, trick on air. And got a lot of fluid coming out there now. And close. Oh, open up a dollar. And that's basically it. It looked like some bubbles, but I did it once with this hose removed again. And it was a nice steady stream. So it's just the bubbles coming up through the hose. So now we'll just do the other side and you're all done. The last lead here on the driver's side. Let's click now. And that's just a lot of good fluid there. So, oop. Now the brakes are all bled. Once you've done all of this, you can turn the ignition on and off a couple times for the pump to prime. Then check your level. These are quite finicky on having a low level. They'll give you a bunch of warnings, which is good. But make sure you have a correct level when you're done with everything. And then that's it. And don't forget that if your assistant is your wife, Make sure to thank her by taking her out to dinner or something nice like that. Good. Just a quick extra thing. After running the pump once more, after done everything to build up the pressure again in the system, the fluid level actually dropped. It's very hard to see, but the fluid level is actually right on max. And it dropped from pretty much halfway between here and the top. So that's a good thing to know if you have a little bit too much fluid in there when you're done bleeding. That's not an issue. It will go down. Make sure you don't have too little fluid in the system when you're done bleeding because then you might run the pump dry. So now the system is at perfect level. I will of course drive the car for a bit. Make sure that the level stays there and check that all the joints around all the new brake hoses are nice and dry and then uh, I have good brakes for hopefully many years to come. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys were able to follow along and that it was simple enough and that you could see. It's a little tight to film under the car, but I did my best. Of course, this procedure is in the service manual for these cars, and I highly recommend that you get a copy of that if you plan on doing any work to your car yourself. It's really great to be able to look things up, 
Yes, there are a lot of good things on forums and that as well, but it's always good to read the manual and see what the manufacturer actually wanted you to do when you service a car or, you know, the service department. Anyways, if you liked this video, please give a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. If you feel like helping the channel out a little bit more, I do have a Patreon down below and I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon for the continued support. It really means a lot. I also have a store down below with some merchandise, some t-shirts, and various fun things you can check out if you want to down in the description below. But until next time, I'm Adam and this was Lumos the Classic. I'll see you soon.